This is gonna be two days in a row. What, what, in the butt, butt? What is up guys? So today we're gonna to be going through a really common problem that you find in some of the intro algorithm books like Cracking the Coding Interview. Basically this problem is you're given a set of distinct integers and you wanna return all possible subsets, meaning the power set. And what that basically means is say you're given an array of one, two, three. You wanna return all values such that, you know, you only have the um, subsets that include one item, then two items, and then all three, right? All kind of uh, common that you can come up with. So for example, you have the one, three, two, three, one, two, which is always you can arrange two item values using the initial input. I think this problem is probably a bit too simple for a lot of real interviews, but I think the ideas that you take out of it are definitely helpful for a lot of variants that you might actually end up getting, especially this one idea of a partial that we'll be working with in code. Normally, I think it's easier to start with ideas and complexity and then move into code at the end so that you can follow the normal flow of an interview. But for this question in particular, I feel like it's a lot easier to understand through code compared to just written explanation. So we're gonna go ahead and start kind of coding out like the bare bones part of this. So we have power set, which is gonna take nums array, and then we have a result, which is gonna be, you know, a vec of x. We just wanna return result. And the way that I like to kind of think of this question is when you're trying to solve it, all you're really doing is you're saying that you're gonna start at the very beginning, and from there, you're going to iterate every single other index. And you're gonna kind of say, what happens if I include this number or I don't include this number? Because when you think about what the subsets are, they either include one of the values in the array or they don't include one of the values in the array. For example, three just includes three and not one, two. And then similarly, one, three includes just one, three and not two. So it's kind of just uh, two options that you're given at each index. We wanna say that once we've gone through all decisions, meaning going through all indices, that's, you know, one subset. That, right, that we've gone with. For example, if you choose to not add every item, that finally gives you the empty set, which is part of the result. And from that point, we'd say that we would want to add this to our list of results. But that's going to be something that you definitely want to keep track of. So let's say that we have a partial, which is equal to an empty list. And then we're going to go ahead and populate this through our helper function. So let's call this directed power set. It's going to work on an index. And we want to just kind of call directed power set on zero. So the thing we said earlier was we have the option to either call, you know, a directed power set or uh, proceed by either including an item or not including an item, right? So including an item means that we append to our partial uh, this value at this index, and then not including it means that, you know, we just don't. And in both cases, you just proceed to the next element. That seems to be the pretty much basic of how the recursive step ends working out, right? And then when you get to the base case, what we mentioned before was that once we get to the last choice, which means that when you get to the line of nums, you want to add that to your result. So we'll have if end is equal to line of nums, we pen to our result, copy of partial, and then we return. And this pretty much ends up being the entire set of code for the power set problem. Normally you'd go through some more test cases. I think to find the basic idea the first time you solve this, it's maybe a bit more complicated because you'd end up you know, starting from your empty set and then working up to one item arrays and then two item arrays and then you know up to n item arrays, right? But usually it's not really this problem in itself that might be helpful, but more this idea of using a partial result, using recursion, and then kind of having this directed power set function where you use a helper to start from the beginning index and then go through all of the items one by one. So separate questions like permutations also follows a separate pattern where you have a partial that you're building up. When you've processed all of the items in an array, then you just want to say that you want to add your partial to the result. And the entire time through, as you're making your recursive calls, you're updating and unupdating your partial array. The harder part of this problem, I think, is probably analyzing the complexity. So another time we mentioned that a good thing to kind of do for analyzing recursive functions is that you want to kind of look at the branching factor, right? So here you kind of see that directed power set, it's called two times, and we end up doing that n times, right? So each directed power set is going to make a branch to two, and then those two below are going to make another two, and then on and on so that 
you should see a kind of two to the n pattern. And this ends up happening n times, which kind of gives us the time complexity of n times two to the n. And because our stack is only n deep, before we recurse, you're gonna get in your space complexity. So again, this is definitely a simpler problem to kind of do. And maybe I think if you haven't seen it before, it's useful to go through and start from the case of zero items and then one item and then two item and see if you can kind of form a solution approach yourself. But the more useful thing might be kind of this directed power set pattern where lots of uh, interview questions, I think, follow this kind of similar pattern. And that's pretty much it for this problem. I think this may have not been a great explanation, but if you guys found, you know, even this part useful, uh, let me know.